In today's video guys, I'm gonna show you how to put your hands on epic or legendary gear from the Grave of Venom in Season 3. Now by the time you get to Season 3, your account will be more developed than when you start in Season 1. Still, it does depend what heroes you have available and how developed is your account. That will determine if you're going to go straight for legendary gear or you're gonna farm lower stages to get epic gear instead. Either way, is still a pretty good accomplishment. This is day four, if I'm not mistaken. Now, I've been doing this since yesterday, actually. And uh, I really intended to do a video before, guys, but I've been super busy uh, with the family over the weekend and stuff. So I just didn't really have a chance to uh, get super involved with, uh, uh, with the game and the kind of like push everything to, to its limits. Today's video is sponsored by Dragonair. So I just want to say a big thank you for sponsoring the video. And continuing to support our uh, channel. If you guys are new to the channel or you haven't tried Dragonair Silent Ghost just yet, Season 3, the Echoes of the Deep is in full swing, guys. Promising richer rewards and events than ever before, bringing in a new elemental affinity, bringing in tons of new heroes, a new sandbox, new bosses, new artifacts, new gear sets, tons of different things happening in Dragonair Silent God. So if you want to get involved, you can download the game by using my link in the description down below or in the pinned comment or by scanning the QR code you see on the screen. Dive deep, battle pick and come and join me in Dragonair, guys. But leaving all that on the side, it does depend on how developed is your account. So I'm going to show you a few different teams. I'm going to show you teams from different elemental affinities that will be able to do it. So I am talking about stage seven at the moment i'm just not able to go to stage eight i haven't really farmed a lot of gear to be able to build my uh heroes in epic gear or anything like that i'm still using rare gear on a lot of them we have no runes available or anything like that the artifacts are only at level 12 and the heroes are only at level 69 or 70 depending on how uh, much we actually level them up so from here you can get legendary gear you can start collecting the uh uh, materials in order to forge the legendary gear which by the way you cannot do uh, uh, you cannot do it just yet now if you're not able to go as high as stage seven or stage six you're going to be able to go to stage five and this is honestly not too hard you don't uh, necessarily require any crazy heroes to to get this done or any crazy artifacts but if you want to farm stage seven which i'm about to show you you will require to have something a bit more specific. Now, there are different options, of course, but I'll show you what I'm using at the, at the moment, you know? And yes, the main issue that we'll, uh, we will all encounter, most probably, at least for me, that's my main issue at the moment, is getting the accuracy, man. It's pretty hard, especially that I'm not using Vinyara to have the accuracy aura or a different uh, character that will have an accuracy aura. Now, because we are in Season 3, how I mentioned, right? Your account will be more developed, but the boss will be a bit different as well. So they actually changed some of the skills on the on the Harpy, guys. And it will catch some of you maybe uh, off guard if you're not checking it out. Basically, when uh, the boss is using the ultimate skill, if the boss is not under two debuffs at least, the target will be changed to a random enemy. So instead of focusing your tank, it will go and kill somebody. It will go and attack somebody else if you don't have two debuffs on the boss. So that is the main mechanic this time around. You need to have two debuffs every time the boss is using the ultimate. So this is the team that I'm using, guys. Yes, I am using the new legendary couple because uh, I got them and uh, I want to I want to get, uh, get the most out of them, right? Because they're super, super awesome. And they are very, uh, very powerful too. They're great for this dungeon because he's not going to die because of the passive, right? This is going to be massive. Then, of course, she has a massive healing with the ultimate skill. And she has this blind, which is a debuff on the, on the little minions, which, by the way, will not attack you if they are under blind. Now, I do have two legendary artifacts on the team, if I'm not mistaken. And I'll be very honest. The Gatekeeper staff is not a necessity on her because at some point we just won't be able to heal enough anymore to even gain a shield. The main reason why I have it is to have this 25 skill haste. So I could change the set that I have and grab another skill haste set, but I don't think I have uh, enough, uh, enough pieces to, to make it happen, basically. You see, my tank is in rare gear. You're not going to be able to do that with any tank because... He is very, very powerful together with a, with a partner, right? He's just becoming uh, invincible, basically, uh, when he's uh, dropping to 
to zero HP. So that uh, really gives them the edge versus this dungeon. So I kind of like want to showcase them. But we're going to do another team with Radiance and Fire, where we're using Garius and we're using Ardrath as a, as a different option and see if we are able to beat this stage because I actually haven't tried it yet. So I have the Incest Burner on um, Frerbart. He will gain more ultimate energy to ensure that we are using the ultimate skill in the 18 seconds. So the boss has an 18 second cycle, not a 20 seconds. So we need to make sure we are getting uh, enough, uh, enough speed on our heroes. We don't have the runes available. Uh, this will unlock tomorrow, if I'm not mistaken, at level 21. So once we're going to be able to get the uh, positive runes on, this will allow us to gain a bit of extra skill haste. Still not perfect, but it will allow us to gain some additional stats, allowing us to push on higher stages, you know? Then we have the Witch's Remains on Frerbart, on uh, Frerbart, on Voresh, sorry. And we have uh, the Ravatrix Roots, which is the legendary artifact from the Feymander from Season 2. But again, it's not a necessity to use this one. The Eyeball of the Giant will do just fine. This will give her some HP as well, which will enable her to have a better survivability, allowing me to focus more damage. And instead of staying here for five minutes, I'm staying only for three minutes and a half or four minutes in the run, right? Because I need to get the, the damage done. I have no timing actually, because with the ultimate energy that uh, we have going at the moment, I mean, with the, with the skill haste that we have on and the way we are recharging our ultimate energy, we are pretty straightforward to ensure that we're keeping it on uh, 18 seconds, okay? And that is uh, more than enough for me. We got to make sure we have those debuffs on. Now, I do tend to use some food, guys, just to ensure that we're going to be able to do it. But I'm pretty convinced that even if I'm not using this, we're going to get it. The real main reason why I'm using the food is to gain the extra 15 accuracy. Because at the moment, I just don't have enough accuracy. We need 170. And even with accuracy chess pieces, I only have 158. He has an accuracy chess piece, okay? So that's, uh, that's how bad it is at the moment with the accuracy. That will be one of the main things that will stop me to push on the highest stage. Not that my tank will die or anything like that. Now, another thing to keep in mind, positioning is not as important as before because his first skill right now, this first skill on the boss, really hits super hard, okay? And because of it... uh. It's, it's really no point to hide uh, to hide your, your, your heroes because they can get uh, wrecked even from the back of the map. It doesn't really matter where you put them anymore. So I cannot really go and tell you that, yeah, this strategy will work as effective as it uh, used to do before. The reason why I chose Sigrid is because she can deal damage to everybody, regardless of where they are placed on the map, while the rest of the damage dealers will have either a diamond shape uh, uh, area uh, coverage area either uh, they will have a small box secret is gonna go on everybody that has debuffs which is very very uh impactful because we're able to to deal a lot of damage and kill the orbs quick now the orbs even if they decide to attack how i mentioned this tank is just absolutely amazing uh theoderem and uh, theodemer and the uh, feign jader just super super powerful and uh I'm very fortunate that I managed to to summon them. I'll be very honest with you guys because for a second I thought that I won't be I thought that I won't be getting them. But they are very very uh, useful in here, you know. And I chose to go with Frerbar just to get some additional healing and to get the attack down too. Uh, I was using uh, uh, Alminster as well in here. He's good too. Don't get me wrong, but. I don't have the extra stats on uh, on him. He doesn't really need them anyway to survive. But I decided to use him in the other team just to show you how uh, how it will play out. Elminster is great because he brings two debuffs with the ultimate skill, decrease attack and decrease accuracy. That makes him actually very, very solid. Plus on top of it, he has the shield too, you know? So it's definitely a very, a very good uh, hero here. We have one orb left. And from here on, even if by any chance I do not manage to keep... Uh, Two debuffs on the boss, right? It doesn't matter. We killed all the orbs, so the boss alone will just not be able to kill any of my uh, any of my heroes. It doesn't really matter, you know. Like with that skill, he hits extremely hard. You see, so it doesn't matter where you're positioning your your heroes because this has the potential to one shot your heroes if they're not uh, fairly tanky. Okay, at the moment, these bosses they overpower us. In two weeks, we will overpower them. So. We're basically going to return their favor and uh, it's going to be much easier for us to farm them, which it does make quite uh, quite a bit of a difference, you know. But how you may notice, 
uh, with the 40 plus skill haste I have on Voresh from the two skill haste sets, with the incense burner on Frodbart, I'm always getting the ultimate energy that I need in order to ensure that I'll be keeping two debuffs on the boss uh, before he's using the ultimate. So even if the fight goes on uh, for, a, for a longer time, we're still safe. The thing is, Voresh is slowly getting overlapped by the boss, right? So you've seen at the beginning, Voresh started using his uh, ultimate probably before Frerbart or uh, in very close proximity with him. And now he's just getting closer and closer and closer, uh, closer to pass the, the boss's ultimate. Because that's what happens when you're getting uh, overlapped, you know? But thankfully, we are doing plenty of damage to melt this boss. Sigrid, she's still the MVP. Another reason why I really love the new couple, guys, they deal crazy good damage everywhere. Like, I can use Finja even in the, even in the Goblin. Theodemir and Finja in the Goblin, and they deal solid damage. They are actually almost towards the top of the list. That's how good they are. It's crazy that they actually deal a, a very good damage too. So, how I mentioned from the very beginning, these two are the best, the best legendaries that were added in Season 2, and uh, I wish you guys luck to get them, basically. Uh, in Season 3, sorry. How I mentioned, how I mentioned before, these two are the best legendaries uh, that they. How I mentioned before, they are the best legendaries that were added in season three, and I wish you guys luck to to get them because they're really really impactful. They 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 will completely change your uh, your account. Trust me when I'm uh, when I'm telling you that. So we've done the run, guys. Three minutes and thirty five seconds. The best is three minutes and nineteen. Grave of Venom. Uh, Seven, we are getting legendary materials from here to get legendary gear. We're getting the epic gear. This is actually a nice weapon, the best weapon that I got so far. And uh, slowly and surely, we will make our way to, to the next stage. But we need to unlock, uh, unlock the runes and unlock a, a higher level for the heroes and for the artifact to really allow us to push to the, to the next level. Let me quickly show you the next team that we're trying to use on stage seven. Then we're going to discuss about uh, a few more. Uh, Free to play uh, budget friendly teams in a, in a second, you know. Now, this team in the current state is just not able to tackle state seven. So, we are doing state six with it. On state seven, actually, let me just show you. Garius is completely getting uh, destroyed, you know. <laughs> so, unfortunately, we're going to have to turn it down a notch. Now, if I would change my damage dealers, if I would change Elminster, bring in Adolphus to try and keep him alive like that with a battle skill, that will definitely be. Uh, very helpful. The main thing is that the boss takes Garius down so quick that you just won't believe it. Like, look at that. It's like he never. It's like he never existed. Now, what I could potentially try actually here is to see if I'm putting Ardred as a tank. She is much tankier than him usually, right? So that might be a bit of a a bit of a help. Uh, I'm quickly going to actually change the artifacts on a, on them to see if that will uh, make a difference. So I'm gonna get the. Um, I'm going to get a Scarab from, uh, from Garius, give it to her. Even though I think Garius is more uh, tanky than she is. I'll be very, very honest. I think he's actually tankier than she is. Or maybe, maybe not. No, he's not, okay. No, he's not. For whatever reason, I thought that uh, he might be. But actually, with, uh, with the artifact, probably, probably he is. So we're going to give him the Gatekeeper Staff. So we're bringing in another Legendary in, uh, in the mix here. Another Legendary Artifact. That's what I have on, so let me just quickly sing them all. Uh, we have the Witch's Remains, Gatekeeper Staff, the Ravatrix Roots, and I'm using Burn for, uh, for damage. They're going to be just fine at surviving. My main, uh, my main issue is having that tank to uh, take the initial, uh, initial damage from, uh, from the boss. So maybe Ardrash is going to be able to survive a bit better. By the looks of it, she seems to, to be in a much, much better shape than... Uh, uh, than Garius. So if Garius gets to heal her, we might actually be able to get, uh, get it done like this, actually, you see? So there we go. It does seem that we might have the, the potential to, to survive the, the entire run, but it's still not, uh, not sure because a lot, of, a lot of things can go wrong. Like this one, for example. I was going to say once the, the Scarab amulet is on cooldown and there's nothing to save us there, it won't work. So I feel like... Uh, Grouping Alminster differently because right now Alminster is pretty use, uh, useless because of the battle skill. It needs to be in two, two tiles distance. 
So if I'm going to bring him here, right, I don't need to keep them at, uh, at a big distance anyway, because how I mentioned, the boss will really, really smack us. So I can even put him closer to make sure that once they're all moving to the front, they're still going to be fine and get covered by, uh, by that, you know. So let's, let's give it a go like this. Kyarius is still running at his, uh, at his right place right there. Having that uh, initial shield on is very, very important. I feel like that's, that's making the, the main difference in here. So there we go. Maybe now it's going to work a bit better because of the, the shield from Elminster and his uh, battle skill. Hopefully. Okay, we still lost her. If, uh, if we were using that battle skill just a little bit faster, uh, it would have been, uh, been better. From here on, I highly doubt that we're going to survive without the extra healing from her and just from uh, Garius. Probably Garius is going gonna, is gonna to go down quick too. Uh, it takes him quite a while to, to heal, you know. So stage 7, guys, is no joke. That's why I showed you the first team. Like, uh, it really depends on how developed is your account. If you are able to push to the higher stages or you're going to have to turn it down a notch, which is not a problem whatsoever. Like, if, if you're not able to do 7, go to 6. Yes, you're not going to get the uh, legendary materials, which is not the goal uh, at the moment. The main goal for all of us should be basically to make sure that we are farming some epic gear, we're slowly progressing on the ladders with all of these stages, and once the double legendary gear drops, that's when we're going to start farming gear. Right now, we're just basically laying the foundation to be able to farm the higher difficulty of Goblin, the higher domains, because tomorrow we're going to get level 21, we're going to be able to level up our champions that will increase the stats, we're going to be able to come back at stage 7 and destroy it, right? It's going to make such a big, uh, big difference, get the negative runes, uh, the positive runes, sorry, and uh, that will make a massive, massive difference. But as it is right now, uh, with this team, we're just not able to tackle stage, uh, stage 7, even though I tried quite a few, quite a few different teams. Probably if I'm changing, uh, changing a few... Uh, a few heroes in here, bringing in some uh, uh, heroes that might have a bit of more utility all around than the damage dealers that I'm using, you know, it could potentially be a bit more uh, helpful. The reason why I opted to go in uh, with the burn is because I have the extra debuff from them, which is definitely helpful, you know. And I think we are going to uh, farm these bosses much faster with, uh, with burn, you know. Now, when we are talking about more budgetish teams, guys, for the lower stages, as long as you are keeping in two debuffs, you can literally follow the exact same strategies we had in Season 1, in Season 2. Magan is going to be nice in here. Uh, Irina bringing the decreased attack. Of course, having a Quarian for the Radiance and Fire Element is going to be nice. Adolphus, Isol, they won't really be able to survive just yet. But I'm going to show you guys a couple of different uh, examples of teams that you could use on lower, uh, lower difficulties. I'm not going to rebuild those heroes as well because I just don't have, uh, I don't have enough uh, uh, materials, especially for the lightning and necrosis. I haven't farmed that domain at all yet, you know, so uh, I won't be able to build the team. But I will show you what team you should use if you are going on. Uh, on with those elemental affinities, you know, which most probably I feel like a lot of people won't at the moment because let's be honest, the best tanks, kind of like the best heroes for the moment, they are a uh, part of a uh, frost, uh, poison, fire, radiance, you know, like we have lightning and acrosses, uh, we have a lot of awesome heroes in there too, but it's a bit harder to, to make it work with them at the moment, you know. So there we go. This boss will be, will be going down. I'm going to leave the run. Uh, it's fine if I'm, uh, if I'm getting the energy used on this stage rather than the other. It's not really going to change my, uh, my life or the progression of the account either by farming one, uh, one run on a, on a lower stage, you know. But the damage, of course, Arasis is actually pretty solid. Biggs doing a pretty good job too. The better we're going to be able to build these characters, the better the damage too. You guys know the drill, right? But keeping the keeping the debuffs is uh, is key, and you see, with two skill haste sets, is enough to ensure that by the time the whole uh, the whole uh, run is done, you're not going to be overlapped by the by the boss. So there we go, we got the we got stage six done. 
let me just quickly show you if we are looking to basically uh bring in some different uh different teams you know so redeploy and let's try to quickly create a couple of different teams so let me show you one for uh lightning and uh and acrosis for example so from here let's leave all the the big boy uh, legendaries on the side so you want to have healing, right? You want to have a decreased attack. You want to have all these things that are very, very important. So Zarlot is going to be very, very impactful. You want to have a decreased attack from an AoE hero. I'm not even going to look at the new shadow, uh, shadow heroes, guys. Even though some of them, they might be pretty, pretty good in here. We're going we're gonna to leave them on, uh, on the side for the moment. So Zarlot is going gonna, is gonna to give us a good healing. Nathaniel is going to give us good support, good shield. You will need to have a couple of different uh, support heroes. If you want another damage dealer attack down, Neola is a very, very good option. If you want to have, of course, uh, uh, more healing, Magan, she's going to be awesome. I, I feel like you will need these three support characters. So Magan, she has this amazing battle skill that gives you ultimate energy. She gives you healing. So having, uh, having them in a team uh, is, is pretty solid. Now, if you don't have Yola by any chance, uh, by the time you get to Season 3, you can always use Irena and then just look to bring in a different damage dealer, which, of course, if you're going for a, for a Necrosis, it can be uh, Zadok. Why not? He's a very, very good option. For uh, Light, you want to bring some Dauntless, but without any other Dauntless, it's going to be a bit more uh, hard to make it work. This will probably farm Stage 5 and 6 without a problem maybe they will struggle a bit on stage six because uh, uh we won't really have a, a crazy crazy tank in here but you can make a tank out of any of these uh, characters now if that's not good enough and you're struggling because uh you just don't have enough uh, enough firepower you can definitely look to bring in a in a tank so the problem with the tanks from these two elemental affinities with the ones that we have at the moment not many of them are very, very impactful, right? Like, he is a pretty good option because he shields himself, he's able to stay alive pretty well. So I would potentially replace maybe Nathaniel with him, you know? So, yes, you're not getting the shield, but as long as you're staying alive with Zarlot and, uh, and Magan and him, you should be fine. But this is probably only on stage 5 with uh, uh, a, bit of a, a, bit of a, a bit of a struggle to gather before you actually get some better gear than uh, the common or the or the rare one you know so this is a this is an option from a uh, this elemental affinity if we are talking about different combinations because you don't need to use five man elemental affinity you only need three man elemental affinity so i would strongly suggest you to use megan megan she's just an awesome awesome character so if we're looking for a uh, different uh, different elemental affinities let's go to Ice and Poison. So from here, of course, let's just say we, uh, we want to get Frerbart. Frerbart is going to give us a lot of healing. No brainer. Let's bring him in. Then we are looking to get in some, uh, some damage, you know. Well, let's get her in. More healing. Let's get her in. And from here on, we kind of like need one more thing. So we have a three-man elemental affinity. So here I need a shield, preferably. Uh, either if I'm bringing in an Adolphus, either if I'm bringing in a Quarian, is another good healer. He's not a shielder. But with all these healers around me, I'm going to stay alive. He, they, they will help me, especially this battle skill. He has a very short cooldown. So creating something like this for lower stages, stage 5, is going to work perfectly. Not a problem whatsoever. But guys, that was all for this video. Let me know in the comments down below, what teams are you using to tackle the Grave of Venom so far? What stage are you farming? And keep in mind, we are talking about Season 3 here. Thanks again to Dragoner for sponsoring today's video. And if you guys want to get involved or you want to help and support the channel, you can download Dragoner by using my link in the description down below or in the pinned comments. I'll catch you all in the next video. Peace.